Hey, everybody. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon from wherever you're tuning in from. Uh, it's Thursday. So as usual, we've got another workshop. And in today's workshop, we're going to be talking about meshes. So we're going to show you yep. how to mesh things, um, how to bind in weight, uh, talk through some things that you need to think about. Uh, we're going to start by looking at how to prepare a raster file to actually mesh. And then we'll talk through a very simple mesh and then slowly get more and more complex. And then at the end, we'll show off a bunch of demos that also use mesh just so you can get some inspiration on maybe how you want to use mesh. Um, but before we actually get into all of that good stuff, let's first talk about what a mesh even is. So for uh, vector graphics, when we create a vector shape or vector path, um, vectors are made up of uh, lots of different individual vertices. And those vertices, we can bind and weight to bones, or we can move them um, individually to create deformations. Now, with, with raster graphics, we don't have anything to actually control the graphic with. So that's why we create meshes. And a mesh is basically a matrix of vertices that we can bind and weight, just like we do with um, vector shapes, or we can move those uh, vertices individually to create those deformations. Hey, Ivan, good to see you again. Um, we're talking about mesh today, in case you missed the intro. Um, and remember, if you missed the start, the replay is going to be up after we are done. So, okay, that's what a mesh is. Um, let's start by talking about how you prepare a file uh, to get ready to actually um, mesh. Now, there's some, um, there's some rules of thumb that you need to know about, and we'll go through those individually here. Let me get my Photoshop up on screen. Now, if you came to my last, um, creative session, then you saw me actually work through this file here and actually put it all together. But let's talk a little bit about, you know, what you want to think about as you start adding your file to Rive. So um, one of the things, well, the first thing that you want to do is separate the thing that you want to mesh from your background. So you can see in here, I have lots of different layers, my main character, um, my background characters, they're all separated from the background. The reason that we do that is when we're going to be making deformations to a mesh, um, if you don't have the background separated, then you run the risk of actually deforming that uh, background and it's just going to look weird. You also won't be able to move your character um, around or anything like that or else the entire background is going to move as well. The next thing that you want to do is determine the level of articulation that you want. So if you want a character that can do everything like you're designing or you're creating something for a game, um, then you'll want to actually separate your character um, more and more. And by separate, I just mean cut the character up. So in this case, I've got the, um, the head, eyes, and uh, little crown here are all separated um, you know, from one another. So that means I can control the eyes. I can control the hat. I can control the head. Um, but you know, if you just want a character that's going to sit there and idle, you could probably get away with leaving the character all in one piece. Um, but, uh, as a general rule, the more you separate your character, the more that you actually like cut pieces apart, the more control that you're actually gonna uh, end up getting in the long run. Um, the other thing that you wanna do is make sure that you clean up any extra pixels that are on your, um, your assets. So I'm in Photoshop and I can check this by, I can select something and hit uh, Command T to bring up the transform uh, tool. And I can see if that bounding box is actually right there on the edges of my graphic, which is what I want. So in this case, I've actually got some sort of errant pixel over here. And you can see it's making that bounding box way bigger. Now, the reason you want to do that um, is because when you go to replace things, 
um, in you know your file later. You don't want to have pixels off to the side here, um, or else if you have a mesh that's actually put on to let's say the head. Um, it may mess up the mesh when you replace the graphics. So if you have an errant pixel, just you know, make sure you try and clean it up, erase things until your bounding box is right there on the edge of the character. Okay, and then the last thing is to make sure that you name all of your layers yeah. uh, accordingly. Um, you wanna do this because again, well, First of all, for organization, you want to know what everything is. It makes it a lot easier uh, to work with. And the other thing is um, when you go back and, you know, let's say the artwork isn't quite where you want it to be and you want to do some extra painting or you want to, you know, change some things up. Um, when you replace the asset or the, P uh, the PSD uh, in Rive, it needs to have matching names. So if I want to update the body, then I can do some... Now this is going to be horrible. I'm just going to do a little, do a little wiggles on here. Um, let's say that's the update to the artwork. Uh, I want to make sure it's on the body layer. And then when I replace it in Rive, um, if I have, if the names don't match, then this asset's not going to actually match. So make sure you have the right names on everything. Okay. So that is preparing your file for import, uh, and then you, you know you can just save it and then import your PSD, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Um, but we're not gonna work with this. This is a little too complex. We're gonna start with something simple. We're gonna start with this. <clears throat> it's a simple flag. Um, so the mesh for this is gonna be really, really easy. So I've got it named. I'm gonna double check to make sure that I don't have any extra pixels, which it seems like I do, I do up here. So I'm just gonna erase there really quick just to double check okay now i'm happy with that bounding box so i can save this i'm gonna actually save this to my desktop so it's easy to find uh there's my nope there's my desktop flag for demo there we go okay now i've got my new um i've got my rive file open and let's see where's that here it is i can just drag in it and drop it right into Rive, and we'll just give it a second for it to actually make it in here. All right, so now I've got my PSD, my flag still processing. We'll give that a second. There we go, now we're ready. Okay, I can either, I can do two things. I can either drag and drop the flag onto the stage and then resize it or into my artboard, or I can get rid of this artboard, right click, generate artboard, and now my asset is actually right in here. Okay, so let's start by creating some bones for this, just so we have something to weight it to afterwards. Um, so the first bone I'm gonna make is up here at the top, and you'll see why that bone is important in a minute. And then I need some bones to actually make this flag wave. So I'm gonna add in three bones, one, two, three. All right, so now I've got my bones to actually wave the flag after I get done meshing it. I'm gonna hide these for now. And then we can start creating the mesh. So for something like this, we don't actually need to think about the 3D form of it. We just need to think about how this mesh is actually going to bend. So if to create a mesh, we can go here to this create mesh button with the asset selected. And you can see by default, we get this square mesh, which is pretty decent. We can take that and we can move these points and you can see that it kind of, it kind of skews the flag back and forth, but that's not, it's not exactly what we want. We want the flag to actually bend. So if I add in some more points, like let's say here and here, now I can bend the flag at the bottom and it can bend here in the center, um, but it's still not exactly um, what we want. So I'm actually gonna bring these bones back up. Now, when I'm working with a mesh that's gonna bend like this, what I wanna do is determine where the um, bones are actually gonna bend. So we've, we've got a joint here 
and we've got a joint here. So this is where we actually want to stick some, and sorry about the dogs. Uh, we actually want to stick some, um, some vertices right here and right here on those joints. Um, Who let the dogs out? You know what? Uh, <laughs> you guys are throwing off my groove, man. <laughs> okay. So um, instead of just placing um, vertices in a random spot, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put a vertice right here where my um, joint is. So we'll start with one for now. So we'll go there and there. And then we can come down and drop in a point here and here. Okay, so now we have some vertices that um, will allow us to bend this flag and make it look a little more like a flag. So let's bind and weight these and see what our mesh looks like. So I'm gonna use the bind bones uh, button there, bind to the top, this bone, this bone, and this bone. All right, so let's weight this really quick. We want our top two vertices to be on this bone, this bone here so that when we wave the bottom part of that flag, these vertices stick to the top as if there's like a flag pole running through here. And for these vertices, since they're on the line that's between these two bones, we want these vertices to share um, influence between the yellow and purple bone. So we'll go here and just say each one of those has an even split between those two bones. This one here, we want to have an even split between the purple and that. What do you what do you call that? Teal. It looks teal to me. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the, the teal. tealish green bone. All right, and then this these vertices down here, we want them to have. Um, we want this this teal bone to have complete control of those. Okay, so we're bound and weighted, and we can check how our deformations look. So that looks pretty decent. And then we've been there. That looks okay. And when we've been here, that looks okay. Now, you can see that right here where we're bending, it's a really sharp point. Um, so we don't, we don't really like sharp points like that. We want more of a smooth curve. So instead of having one point, we can go in and add multiple points. So we'll add another vertice here, another one here. I, I like to use at least three for these points right there, right there, right here, and right here. And what this allows us to do is um, spread out that deformation over a larger area. So we're gonna use the same concept we used before about, you know, this was 50-50 shared distribution of weighting between those two bones. Here we can give that yellow bone a little bit more influence and say it has 75% and the purple has 25%. And then once we get across this bend line here, we can say that the purple has 75% and the yellow has 25. And we'll do the same thing down here. Um, the purple has 75, teal has 25. And this one, the teal has uh, 75 and the purple has 25. Oops, there we go. And then when we go and we bend it again, you can see that it's a lot more of a smooth deformation there. And then this is all kind of, you know, a torn up flag, so it's not as obvious there, but you can see that the bend is a lot better. And we could add even more vertices like here, 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 we could keep subdividing this um, as much as we want to get a smooth deformation. But one thing you want to think about is the more points you add to the mesh, the more your file size is going to increase. It's not as bad as um, as uh, vector graphics. Um, and if you're going to be designing this for a game, you want to be as efficient as possible. Um, so that's essentially all we need to rig up something like a flag. It's a very flat shape. We don't really need interior vertices or anything like that. Um, 
we're essentially setting it up as if we would a oops as if we would a uh rectangle that we want to you know rig up as a flag we'd want to add in some points like oops there and allow these to you know yeah curve like that same thing down here just like that and then we'd be able to weight it to bones and make that nice make that nice curve okay so that's a simple mesh that's how you uh, create a mesh that's how you bind and weight it to bones um, JC is gonna hop in and show you um, a slightly more complex mesh that requires you to think in a more um, three-dimensional way. Oh my goodness, stop sharing. I didn't mean to go Inception on everyone there. <laughs> okay. So, uh, in this case, uh, the idea is uh, to create a mesh for this hue that have this 3D effect. And in this case, when you create the mesh, you need uh, a thing about this part the interior because we want to move this part to create this 3D effect. So what you're going to do is create uh, a new mesh. And here, because uh, this is a cube, I only want to move this sides, the different sides. So I want to create a simple uh, mesh like this around to the cube. Here and here and here. And now I'm going to add a vertex for the interior. So because it's a cube, this, I'm going to add one vertex here and other here and the other, this here. So this way, uh, the idea is use these two vertex and move, oops, and move like this and create this effect. So to check this, I'm going to create a simple rig. In this case, what I need is one bone here. Oops. One bone here, and I need other bone here. So this bone, I want to use this bone to move this part of the cube, and this bone to move the rest of the cube. So I want to bind this, and because for this bone, I only want to uh, weight these two vertex, I'm going to start uh, selecting this bone. This way, all the rest of the vertex uh, uh, is binding to this bone. So I'm going to start with this, and next is this. So now uh, all the vertex are blue, and only need change uh, this to, to yellow. Okay, so now when I move this bone, I move this part of the cube. And when I move this bone, I move the back of the cube. So I want to improve this rig because this is only a few bones. So the uh, first thing I'm going to do is add a group to create a control. I use this as a control and I'm going to move this group in this position. But what you want is uh, move this group just in the center. So for that, I'm going to add, this is the bone. Okay, you move here, add the control to the bone, and now move to the O position. And now it's in the position I want. Move out and nest the bone. So I have the control now to move this bone. And the thing is, uh, in, in this simple read, uh, what I want is when I move this bone, I want that all this part move in the opposite direction. 
So for that, I'm going to uh, group this bone and move the origin here in this position. So to check if it's correct, I'm going to select the bone and the position is 0, 0. Okay, and the, ah, sorry, I need to move the origin here, sorry, in the same position of the control. So I have the control with the bone nested. I have this group in the same position of the control with the bone here. And I'm going to use a constraint, a translation constraint, and use as a target the control. So now when I move the control, the bone, this bone move with the control. But I, what I want is that the move in opposite direction. So here, in the strange, I'm going to change this to negative. This way, when I move, this is what happens. And because the mess is uh, uh, waiting for the uh, these two bonds, I can move this effect. So I, I want to improve this a little bit. I'm going to, because I, here the problem is uh, when I move the control, when I move the control here, you can see that this don't move like supposed to be. So for that, I'm going to do something. I'm going to duplicate this group and move this bone to this position. So the idea is add a new bone and bind these two vertex to this bone and this to this and move this in different uh, speed like this. So, because I add this new, I'm going to bind this bone here and check this bone. And now these two vertex and these two need to be 100 here. Yeah. And the other thing is uh, I want that this bone move a little bit faster. So if I normally use uh, negative 100, I'm going to add negative 300. So now move more faster. So now when I move the control, you can see that oh, something happened here. Oh, what happened here? I use, when I finish this group that have the target, I duplicate the target, but I forget that I need to uh, select the target again. So I want to add the target again, and that's it. Now, this is what happened. Let's move much better. So, because I create the mess in this way, uh, follow the 3D dimensions and wait uh, to the different bonds with different uh, strange, I can create this 3D effect using uh, the mesh deformation. So that's it. This is something that you can add an object, 3D object like this, simple, like cube or something like this, where you can move uh, uh, the different parts to create the the 3D effects. Yep, that's a great way to create uh, three-dimensional effects with your um, meshes. Now, that's a very simple mesh, but you get a really cool result out of it. Um, the one thing to note is that it's very, it's very much straight lines, and so that's really easy to work with when it comes to mesh. But when you start yeah. getting into shapes that are more spherical and like a face that have lots of odd lines that go down it, um, you need to make some more considerations. So uh, once again, JC is going to show us some tricks on rigging up um, faces. Me? I think. I, I don't remember. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I have a moment. Yeah, because I don't have... Uh... Uh-oh. <laughs> don't worry. Here, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, so some tips about how you uh, create a mess in a face. In this case, it's a character. So uh, in this case, the problem is that we have, uh, we need to create the mess to uh, define uh, the volume of the, of the head in this case. And we have different elements inside to the head. And these elements move in this, in different uh, velocity of, of the, follow the rig. For example, in this case, I have this control, and when I move the control, you can see that the nose and the fleck of move in different uh, speeds. And in this way, you create this 3D dimension, no? that the noise is more uh, in front of the uh, fleckers. And for that, you need to add vertex to define the different parts, the mouth, the noise, and in this case, uh, normally it's good in face. It's good to use a line in the middle of the of the of the head that define what is this middle part. Because uh, if I remove this vertex and this, and destroy my file. Sorry. <laughs> this line, all this line, define this middle. Of the head. If I move this, you can see that I have the middle of the job uh, uh, because I can move almost the head. So it's good to define this line that is in the middle. The other thing you need to know in this case, uh, for example, I have this light. So it's good to add vertex to define how move this line because <clears throat> sometimes if I don't have this vertex, when I move the control, depends on the, uh, the, depends on the animation, but when I move the control, this is what happens, how this line is broken, because this vertex and this ver vertex define how, you can see better here, this vertex and this, this vertex from here, create this, these triangles, and when I move this vertex, these lines define how this part is deformed. So to prevent this, it's good to add oops, some vertex to uh, keep this part. Uh, here in the, the hair is more, is more easy, but in this part, you can see that uh, because it's three parts, the hair, the the height is three parts. I see partly this using the vertex that way. So this part move in one way, this part move in other way, and this part move in other way. So because these vertex are nested to this bone, to the control, they move this, the height move better than if I don't use these two, these two lines in between. So this is some tips. Always the face is, is complicated because it's a lot of detail. Uh, uh, you need to create uh, uh, different uh, vertices to define the different parts of, of, of the face. If the face has a lot of details, you need more details and with all this. But yeah, this is the, this is the idea in, in a complex uh, mesh. JC, I don't know if you mentioned this. I spaced out for a bit. Um, I was reading something over here. The uh, thicker lines, does that affect, is that different than the, so I see you have some lines yeah. that appear thicker. Does that affect the mesh differently than? Yeah, is this the, uh, this line force, this line force uh, uh, and, and se separate this part of this. So, okay, create, so well, yeah. When you create vertex uh, inside to the mesh, uh, uh, it's good instead to create uh, one vertex like this, because you have all these uh, triangles, it's good to uh, 
uh, create one and force this line because okay. uh, the behavior here is different when you have this line in between the vertex. The lines work the same. It just forces that edge. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah, and to cool. do that, I, I, I guess we should have mentioned that. Um, when you click to add a vertex and then you just click again, you're going to be creating those, those forced lines. If you click and then hit delete, it'll stop the force yeah. line every time. OK. Cool. Yeah, I always use in inside to create these different islands and prevent the different parts. And this way, I can wait, for example, this vertex in different way than this, you know. And I, I I know that this all this part move in the way I want. So okay, so it's not going to distort the things that no. are within that. As no, it's probably that this part, uh, the distortion in this part is worse than in this. Okay. Yeah. Because you don't have control here. What happened here? This move. Uh, if if I move, oops. Ah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. The thing of these triangles, the uh, design inside can be deformed in different ways. Like this, you can see here what happened here. How broke the line. So. Yep. Cool. All right, sweet. Okay, so let's look at a handful of different um, examples that use mesh. So, JC, I'll give you, I'll give you a break yeah, for a I second. Yeah, I have, uh, I have a lot, but I want to show you something simple uh, like this. This is the same uh, example of the cube. It's a object uh, that is, is, is similar to a cube. And um, yeah, I create this mesh. In this case, because I have uh, more details, uh, I added all these vertices to separate the different elements. So in this way, I can uh, I can control how these part uh, move in the deformation. Uh, OK, let's see the file here. And you can see how move in 3D. I have this control and the mess. Moment, stop it. You can see here now. That works. So I weight the different vertex in different way to create the 3D effect to this bone and this bone. I only use two bones, like the wow. cube. And you can see that this part that is need to move more because the perspective have more influence in yellow. And this part that don't need move a lot is have much more influence in, in blue. And this is the thing. I create this vertex to prevent this part of the level. So this part, the deform of this part is more than this and create this 3D effect. So because this is important, how you create the mess to uh, <clears throat> prevent or define the different uh, elements of, of the mesh. And this is more complex. Uh, mesh. Okay. Uh, in this case, I'm going to hide the bond. It's a jellyfish. Uh, in this case, have uh, interactivity. I can hover and create this and can click and react. And here you can see that I use different different parts. See the file here. Oops. This is all the uh, asset I use, all the tentacles. And here, this is the mesh in front. Let's 
Gut, diese hier. Hm. And you can see how it works. Something interesting here is this. Uh, because this uh, acid have a glow around. I don't could, in this case, because I want this glow, I don't put the, uh, the acid, uh, you know, in, in the same of the, of the border. I create this uh, uh, line to vertex around to prevent this glow. Because if I, uh, I create the vertex uh, here, the mesh here, I cut this glow. So, yeah. and other parties. So that the head of the is that what it's called the head or of the jellyfish body? What is it? The That's what is that just one graphic, one image? Yeah, no. Here, uh, let me show you because this file is a little bit complex. Uh, here is the front part. I have the front part. I have this part for the back okay because yeah i, I have a different part to create uh, uh the animation because the animation you can see here that uh oops. the animation uh if i use the same asset for all the hair i don't i can recreate this part you can see this part how move in behind this part uh, this is because this part is one asset and this part is other asset. I use two, the back and the front. And this way I can, let me show you here, is this now? No. This was, I don't know what is it now, but let me. Yeah, it's too far uh, here. Oops. Nice. This is the back and the front. So this way, the animation, the deformation is more in 3D because the back moves in different way than the front. And you can see how this part uh, moves in, uh, behind to this part and this part moves behind to this part. Hmm. So this is the thing. And the same with the uh, tentacles. The tentacles, you can see, uh, here, oops, oops, different vertex, and it's waiting for the different bond. Yeah, that's cool. So this is more complex, but. In, in here, I use all these that uh, we say, uh, use the vertex uh, in the way I need, prevent the parts uh, I need, uh, weight with the different bonds in the different weight I need. So yeah, the whole. Oops. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the, um, the glow on, um, the jellyfish's body. Um, that's actually a really that's a really cool example to show off. Um, I didn't even I didn't yeah, even remember because, to do that. Yeah. Sometimes when other times you can create the glow behind using mm. a shape, but in this case because the glow is around to the shape, uh, in this case was important. So when I create the uh, the mesh, I prevent this glow. Um, this way, I can I don't lose this effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, last example, something simple uh, with characters. The Dino guy is very simple. Uh, you can see the different. In this case, uh, I create uh, a mess for uh, oops, for the head, the body, because are the different parts, the hands. Here, for example, uh, this is similar to the uh, flag that Robert uh, showed. Uh, 
uh, you, in this case, to bonds, you can see how I weight this bond, this vertex. And when I move this bond, this is the deformation. If I move a lot, I can see some problems. But in this case, for this animation that is very simple, only I need move like this, is perfect. So I create more vertex to create this deformation. And the legs, the same. In this case, this is important in character because here is, is where is the knee. Uh, I don't care the deformation in this part or this part. Is this, where is the join? So in this case, uh, number one trick to uh, uh, create a good deformation is that in the front, the vertex, you have more ve vertex and more space between than this. So you all we have this way with the lines. This, this is in this case uh, that the character have a good example for this. Here in the leg, yeah, you can see here better. The knee uh, have more vertex to define how is there from this part, and this part don't have. I don't need for this part. So when I move the character like this, you can see how this is deforming this part. So, yep. Sweet. Um, I've got a couple examples to show just to reiterate some of the things that JC has said. So just going back quickly to the way those meshes are set up on those joints. Um, so I know that you, obviously you want to favor whichever side it bends, you know, to yeah. or whatever. But I, I reminds me of like those straws with the, like the accordion. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can like yeah. stretch them out and they can bend. So the more the more divisions there are, the cleaner yeah. that bend yep. can be. So. Yeah, so here's an example of using that, um, doing the glow. My little yeah, lamp here the has the glow on the outside of it. And so I've kept the, uh, the uh, I guess, the normal mesh on the outside and then just created what would be um, my normal contour for my, my lamp um, right on the outside of the lamp. And that allows me to give the lamp some 3D perspective but yeah, also retain cool. um, retain the glow. Um, let's see the head. Now, I didn't use a lot of forced edges on my head here, which is why I've got weird bends um, coming out in places. But I did use some forced edges here on the bridge of the nose. Um, and let's see. So that's the head. And then for this guy... <clears throat> I was basically doing the same thing with the knees yeah. where I've got more vertices on the outside of the knee to get that smoother bend than the inside. <clears throat> and normally I would probably cut this up and back paint this area here so that they're kind of overlapped. But I wanted to try the single um, image yeah. asset uh, for a leg because, you know, for the most part, like the leg's not doing too much. It's just kind of, Moving back and forth. You can see when I bend it too much, like there we get a little bit of a mesh break. Um, but if I was going to have the character jump, I'd probably stop him. I don't know. Maybe there. Um, let's see. And one thing that I usually do. Oops. I don't think it's that bone. Which bone is it? It's one of these bones. This one. Oh, it's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that one. Um <laughs> How did I weight this? That's not that. Is it this one? Yeah. Ooh. So yeah. I had created this bone here so that I could kind of change the perspective of the character, either by yeah. moving it or by scaling it. And then I can also get a nice breathing animation. Yeah. Um, this is because cool. I have this center bone and then the outer edges. So this part um, and the front 
are weighted to these bones so that when I scale these, these don't, these don't quite this area and this area doesn't move as much. So it's more of a center yeah. of the, um, center of the character moving. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it for my, for my example. Yeah. For, for the, for the legs and arms in the character, uh, sometimes you, you don't know if, it's better use the uh, arm in different parts or one part. Yeah, in general, I, I think it depends of the animation you want to do with the character. If the animation simple, not too complex, and you can do with the same asset, you can do with that. If if the character need to have a lot of uh, movement, maybe you need to cut the different part and yeah, and kind of. But you can use the different parts and add mess and deform it this different part too yeah. so you can mix together um cool. yeah i mean and i've i've always a lot of the experience i have working with meshes is from working in games and so most of the characters have to have you know run cycles jumps attacks yeah um so that's why i i my process has always been to split especially for the legs to split them yeah. um but I have never done that single um, that single asset for a limb before. Um, but it's it's nice, like it's a nice almost time saver um, in in some ways. When, like you said, the the animation doesn't need to be, um, you know, it's not going to be a super complex animation, and that leg's not going to bend too much. Anyways, Michael, you have your uh, example. No, let's, let's take this a look is at this. yeah. Yeah. So so this is uh, I've done a couple scenes like this um, where it's. An older painting I did that I wanted to add, kind of repurpose and add some uh, life to it, I guess. Uh, so this, let me just play it here real quick. So it's just a scene with some added parallax and Mario's kind of contemplating, contemplating cool. his life as a plumber. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to kind of show this as an example of um, you know, if you've already got some artwork that you, you wanted to reuse, um, I just basically kind of layered everything out. If we look at the, the PSD or kind of how I have all these groups. So I think we've gone over, you know, we've talked about how to do parallax um, in some other videos, um, but combining that with like an animation, um, this is a really simple, like, uh, let me see if I can grab Mario's, I think it's the, What layer is this? Mm -hmm. There, it's this one. Okay, so this mid-ground. So I just roughed out, kind of traced it really roughly. I, there's a lot of things I probably didn't need to add. But for Mario, um, I knew I wanted mm -hmm. his foot to kind of just do some subtle, like, flexing up and down and then have his head tilt. So I just pretty roughly traced out the contour of his shoulder and then the head um, and then just added a few bones so I could anchor anchor this and then start weighting things um, you know based on how much I want yep. you know his head to head to move so the cool thing too is it's messy but you also get some nice like uh, like his back and his shoulder kind of bend and, and it wasn't yeah. really planned so there's a lot to say for just messing around with weighting different areas and what you can get um, with the way things deform. Um, it, you, you don't really, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, I want the back to bend like that or I want the shoulder to react. I was more like, I just want the head to rotate. And then I just kind of feathered the weighting out, um, you know, just a bit. Yeah. Like most of it's that, that blue bone is controlling the head, but then the shoulder kind of goes... I started to kind of distribute it a little bit, but again, it's not much. And I did use, I guess I did use um, those forced edges yeah, the forced along edges, the shoulder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then for the foot, it's the same thing where it's, I didn't really do much, but because I didn't use forced edges, it kind of flows. Um, let's see if I rotate this. Yeah, it's really it's really gross. Like this could be totally done better. <laughs> but just to get something really quick, like from from this distance, like it just kind of gives a nice little effect of him hanging out there. So yeah, that's that's a 
that's a way you can use meshes. You can just kind of think about, I want some subtle movement and go in there and start plunking away. Um, I think I did the same for the, the question block. I did something, I didn't use bones, but I think I just animated the vertices, which probably wasn't the smartest thing, but um, it's not very many. It's a pretty simple. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah in, in, in this case, is a few of vertices, yeah. It's... Yeah, the only benefit if I had done some more, some rigging work and added bones, I could have had it react a little bit more to the um, yeah. parallax. You know, it could have kind of looked like it was rotating, but it it works. It's It was just a quick test. Yeah, I think this um, is a great example of like determining your level of articulation is going to really yeah. dictate how much you have to split up your split up your artwork in the like the, the pre-process or whatever. Um, yeah, so this is a really good example of that. Yeah, this is I definitely recommend if you've got I mean, just go grab a photo or something and just start cutting it up and playing with it uh, to get a yeah. kind of an idea. Um, well, one trick is that uh, it's not necessary to uh, start creating a lot of vertices and yep. make crazy. You know, uh, it's better uh, start with the principal parts or, or the parts that define the volume, like in the cube, this middle part. Weight this vertex, see how it works, and then you can add more vertex and, and weight. So it's better uh, uh, this way because you learn how works the mess. Mm -hmm. And you know, okay, I, if I add this vertex here and wait here, move in this way, okay, this is perfect. Oh, doesn't work. Okay, I remove this vertex. But this is better than create a lot of vertex and then it's crazy to wait all these vertex. So, yeah, yep. yeah. Simple, simple and yeah, simple. Yeah, and... I mean, it that's kind of if I go back, the first head test I did was like just kind of plopping stuff in there and they're like, oh, now I've got to wrangle all this and wait it. And so I think, yeah, that building, like, you know, thinking about blocking things out, right? I, like you can kind of do that with meshes to an extent, right? Like it's hard though. I mean, you have to think about the shape yep. because you can't yeah. really go, like you can add and remove, but moving is, I mean, I guess you can move yeah. things around a bit, but. Are you talking about anyway. the, the the vertices for your mesh? Yeah. Oh, I guess that's one thing that we didn't talk about. Is that's how to I was move. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Let's. I'll. I'll. I'll just show this really quick, and then if you two wouldn't mind talking about kind of, uh, kind of how to adjust your mesh without breaking things too badly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is a more complex example of of. Uh, Kind of trying to be more particular with the geometry and the 3D space. Um, so I guess let's, uh, I'm just going to look at um, the head and how that's meshed out. So this, there's a lot of stuff here that doesn't need to yeah. be there. But if you look at kind of what I did, and you can see there's a ton of forced um, edges that I, pro I probably didn't need to use. Um, but it, it it worked. And I guess that's the thing. It's like, see what works. If it looks okay, like leave it or tweak it. But um, if we go into the waiting mode, so you can kind of see how I was thinking about like the muzzle, like is sticking the furthest out. And I wanted to be able to control that and have it move, you know, at a faster rate than as you go back into the head. Um, so this is really like thinking about you know, what kind of, I think in, in 3D modeling, like edge loops and yeah. things like that to kind of map the contour of the face. Um, I don't think you have to be as precise. Like, I think there's, you know, you can just think about what needs to be animated and what needs to move um, and then start to plan that way. But just, yeah. I think being able to think in 3D space and how things wrap around, like as you get towards the edge of the head, like, you know, this is going to, if you think about it in like a cross section going back, like they get tighter and tighter. But as you rotate this, these points would start to move, you know, further to the right if the head's rotating to the left. So um, just kind of thinking about how things would move, would react when you're rotating. Let's make, 
let's see if I can figure out what my, this is a good example. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> but <laughs> this is kind of an, it just kind of shows you, see how that like the, the snout is moving or the muzzle yeah. is moving more than the other parts yeah. of the head. So yeah, this is again, just learn. I'm still learning a lot of this stuff. Like I've done 3d work and all that, but I think translating that over to, you know, 2d meshes works in some, in some cases, but you really do have to, I think you have to plan a bit more um, and kind of go in with an idea of how you want the character or object to move and then start building your mesh around, around that. So Yep. Yeah, that's that's what I got. Yeah, let me show you just really quick something that we forgot to talk about, but this is this is important because we were mentioning, you know, start simple and then get more complex as you go. Um, so for this character for the head, what I had initially done, uh, I'm scared to break it, but whatever, I'll just break it and then. <laughs> start over um so oh, for no. this that's okay uh, i'll fix it later um you know i would start with something like here uh let's do this doot 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 uh we'll put one there okay so we've got our our simple thing and then the way i always start with something like this is just i would make a line straight down mm -hmm. the center um, like if I was, if I was experimenting with, with meshes again, just kind of making something like this. So you can, you can yeah. work it, you can get it real simple and then decide, okay, well, some of these vertices don't work in the spot that they're at. Um, so I need to move them. Well, if you have your move tool selected and you move a vertice, you can see that you're actually creating deformations, which is not really what you want to do. Um, you can just have your pen tool activated just like you would add a vertice and click and drag just yeah. to move it to the side like that. And then you can add more stuff. So I'd want to add more points here. And then I'd want to define the nose some more like that. And then the eyes. Anyway, so you would do this step by step. So probably what you would do is yeah. work it from uh, from this point, add your bind and weight your bones, test your weighting, move things around. And one of the things that you want to do, uh, or one thing that I like to do is go in here and grab a new timeline. Um, and I didn't bind anything or weight yeah, anything. But you can move your bone and then actually go into your mesh while you're in animate mode. Wait, oh, yeah, head. And then you can adjust your weights um, like that. So I can adjust it while I'm here. And then all this is actually going to apply. Well, that's not how I'd want to do that. But anyways, that's all applied in design mode as well. You can see all those weights that I changed here are applied and my bone is still in a good spot um, here. So I won't have things actually get um, messed up. But if I go back to animate mode, I can see what my mesh looks like in those different um, perspectives or whatever. Yep. Okay. Um, we have some time for questions. Um, so if you have any questions, get them in and we will cover those. Uh, so we have one here. Impressive. Are there still plans to bring it to Unity? Yep. 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 Uh, I believe the Unity runtime is in the works. I don't know how long it's going to take to get here, but um, there is work being done on a Unity runtime. Yeah, it's something we want to. Yeah. Yeah, and we wanted to bring. We want to bring it to other um game engines as well so not just unity uh, i think flair and nima only had unity nima nima half for unity uh, nima i think nima definitely flair, had unity sure. yeah flair and i don't sure for flair yeah okay labrador cool 
<laughs> oh, is that the fox? Yeah, it does yeah. kind of look like. Yeah, I think it, it was supposed to be a fox. That's what it's a, mid journey. It's a puppy. It's a puppy. <laughs> Unless you're seeing mine walk around in the background. And, yeah. Oh, that could be what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, the white one is a husky mix, and then the smaller brown one. She's, dude. She's a mutt. I don't know. She's like, um, healer mix. But they're in a the mood this morning. I don't know what their deal is. It, it got cold here in Texas, and like you know, when it gets cold, them huskies get frisky and they want to just go crazy. So I think that's the problem. Oh, I say it's a problem. It's not really a problem. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. Um, What's everybody's recommendation for mesh? I, I I would say just grab something and try it out. Like you gotta yeah. try it out, or you're yeah. Try, it, but but start with something simple. Yep. To understand the process and and, and to to know how how work the mesh when you with bon bon, and then uh, take other uh, uh, tests more difficult. You know. Um, but yeah, it, it start something simple. Where you can try all the things, create a simple rig with the vertex and try that the mesh move in the way you want. This is the thing, yeah. Yeah, I think a flag or um, yeah, uh, the like a a, a cube. I think those yeah, would be the, the two best ways to start. Yeah. Um, here's a good question. About the fox, were the eyes on a separate layer or is it magic of the mesh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the eyes were on a separate layer. So like, kind of like, um, Robert, I guess you had glowing eyes in the pumpkin, mm -hmm. but you did initially cut them out, right? Or they're cut Yeah, when I, when I first did that mesh, I had left the eyes um, on the same mesh, but to, to give myself more articulation and allow me to put glows behind the eyes. Um, yeah, you'd want to separate that stuff out. And then when you have eyes like this, yeah, you definitely yeah. want to. Yeah, so if we... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. That's what you get when you ask if the eyes are on different layers. Yeah, they are creepy. Oh, my but God. That's... So, yeah, and they are... Um, I think... How did I... Again, like, this is where I wish we could label this, but... So they have a separate control, and they're kind of tied to... Oh, don't. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's what I get for messing around. Anyway, they're kind of tied to the main head control. Um, I was thinking the same thing. Mars attack. attacks. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. That's what... That's, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, what yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know what I just saw? It's our, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There was a toy that was like a a bad guy that was like you fill him with that ooze like the mutagen mm -hmm. stuff but inside it's just his floating like organs and his eyes and his brain <laughs> so it's kind of similar to that mars attacks but yeah there's so i've seen you can also uh, like depending on how how complex you want to get like for a, like a, a human yeah. head like doing eyelids like you can have mm -hmm. those separate and have those layered behind the eye holes <laughs> and then, um, and then you can get some really nice blinks. Like for that one, I just distorted the, the, the area, like the area around the eye hole. Like it's just kind of distorted to close, but I think a more elegant solution, if, if it's something that you're going to be zoomed in on is to separate those pieces and then just yeah. layer them. Um, and then you can animate the blinks and, and things, and you can do cool stuff like, you know, have the eye kind of halfway open or closed mm -hmm. or. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's a really good question. And you can rig something like an eye blink up to a scale, right? You could you could do some really clever yeah. things with yeah. the rig where if you just wanted to scale it down to 50% to have it halfway open or all the way down and then open it instead of having to move two bones, which is what I had for that one. But Oh, Vlad, you missed it. We did meshes this time. But there's always a there's always a replay, so it'll be up on, um, it'll be up on YouTube pretty much right after we're right after we're done. Maybe a couple minutes. Yeah, right. right. And like two minutes of Photoshop. 
because Photoshop and Rive are like a match made in heaven. <laughs> kind of like Rive and Framer. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if we don't have any more questions, I think we are going to call it a day and we're going to pick it up again next week. Normal yeah, I, I, wa I want to see mess deformation. I want to see mess mess uh, animated for 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 you. So work in mess. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Share it on Discord. Exactly. And if you're not part of the Discord, join the Discord. It's the easiest way for us to answer your questions during the week. Um, can I use a bone and scale to create an extra effect inside the mesh? Yep. yep. Totally. Totally. Yeah, if you bind the the vertex you need to this bone inside to the mesh, you can create uh, almost a, a, an effect. Yeah. And just one way to think about it is uh, just really quickly. So you're when you scale a bone that has vertices attached to it, you're not actually scaling those vertices. What you're doing is when you scale it down, your vertices are going to compress towards the bone. And then when you scale it out, they're going to go away from the bone. So yes, you can totally um, use a bone to scale that stuff. That's how you create breathing animations in some cases. Yeah. Again, like I think has been said, just go play around with it. Like yeah. you'll, you'll come up with some interesting stuff and you'll be like, Oh, that's, I can reuse that. You know, when I, would I decide to make a, a more finished project? Cause I think, yeah, unless you have some experience, it can be a bit daunting and frustrating. I think to just be like, I'm going to rig this body and this head and I'm going to, you know, Maybe maybe you've got that skill, but for me, I, I have to take it step by step and figure out how things work, and then you know start building up those skills and and go from there. So I will tell you just one last anecdote, and we'll get out of here. Um, I remember meshing and rigging my first character, and I mm -hmm. like, dude, the when I could like play with it and make things like swell and shrink and bend i was like dude this is the craziest coolest thing <laughs> i've ever done in my entire life like it's super rewarding when you when you actually like create a, a rig and mesh and they weren't good rigs or meshes um but just like it was very inspirational just to yeah. see that and and play with it um so yeah go go mess with mesh yes <laughs> have a good time yeah mess with mesh <laughs> Okay, good. everybody. Same time next week. Same bat channel. Um, who's doing? Who's who's got the Wednesday stream next week? Uh, oh, might no be me. Might be me. Might be Ooh. me. Might be Robert. Might be me. Ooh. I don't know. We'll have to look. There's. We'll, I we'll got let you know on Tuesday. Of... We'll let you know yeah, on Tuesday. We'll let yeah. you know. Maybe All it's right, now. Everybody. Have a good Thursday and have a great rest of your week. And we will see you next week. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye. Oops.